There we go. We should be live. Are we live? I think we're live. Hey guys, this is Austin. And John. With WaltonZinc.com and welcome to our first live stream. Our very first live stream. Yeah. We'll see how this goes. Uh, all the technology seems to be working pretty well, so it's just really down to us and yeah. how we do. So. Uh, a lot of you know, but some of you might not. We've got an entire section, actually another part of our website called meetgistics.com that's all dedicated to try and help you make the best product you can make. We've got how-to videos in there. We've got some tips and tricks. We've got an entire section for you to be able to post your questions and either Austin, myself, or sometimes other users will go ahead and answer those for you. It's a really good website, or we think at least, it's a nice tool for you guys to have just to get the most out of your purchases. Yeah, something different that we can offer you guys to help uh, you guys make better products, something we're not selling you, but we're just trying right. to help you out with. And we've seen a lot of involvement so far, and that's kind of what we're here to talk about today is kind of what we're doing to, to kind of take that to the next level. Yeah, so about a year ago, uh, Austin started talking to me about an idea he had of meetgistics.com. Or, I'm sorry, Meetgistics University. So it's really his brainchild. Uh, we came up with a basic format of kind of what we wanted. And then I had all the labor pains. <laughs> Austin conveniently disappeared and was too busy to help me with any of that. Uh, but no, it's been the last three or four months our main focus here. That's why you haven't seen a lot from us. I mean, we've put out the odd video here or there, but just not in the volume we were doing. That's because we've been filming, editing, and getting all of these ready for you. And so at the end of this live stream today, we're going to have 44 videos going live on YouTube and 44 articles on meetgistics.com under the Meetgistics University category, all going live at the same time. So we'll see how that goes. It should be a lot for you guys to digest. There's a lot of good information in there. There's some that some people might disagree with or think that there's another way to go, but this is just the very basics of all types of meat processing. Yeah, and, and it's just the basics to begin yep. with, but we have a, a huge amount of content planned um, to take it not only from the, the basics to the intermediate to advanced yep. to experts um, to guide you guys through the whole thing, but to start out with, we got just the basics out there. Right, and we wanted to release it all with the initial classes all done all at once just so there'd be enough to make it worth your while to look through it. Uh, if we only released a class or two at a time, I mean, that might not really offer you a ton of value. Uh, one of the things that we're really excited about is how we broke it down. So we've broken down basically every type of meat processing or home processing that you're going to do into seven different categories. In each one of those categories, we did a class structure so you have your 101s, which is under a lot of them, is going to be like what is, so it'll be fresh sausage, what is fresh sausage. List out like the types of sausages, a little bit of history on that. And then we go into like equipment needed to make that type of sausage, and we keep going until we have a basic processing step by step. So in that video, it's just like our how-tos, only a little bit easier to follow. We didn't go into quite so much detail as we would in a normal how-to video. Um, future classes, the two O's, We'll start focusing more on some like professional tips and tricks, ways you can make a little bit better. And then in the three O's, when we get to those, a lot of those will be the science behind. So why this adding this additive gives you, you know, this change in your meat. Yeah. And and trying to separate it out in that class structure, keep everything as short as possible. So you don't have to watch on some of our how-tos, they get to they get eight, long. ten minutes long. They get long. Um, trying to keep all of these as short as possible um, so you can the, Stay a little better engaged, and it's more exciting for you to go through. There's one we failed on miserably, but there's just no way to make ham a short video. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff you have to do for it. So. Yeah. But all in all, we're really excited about this. We really hope you guys like it. We've put a lot of time and effort into this. Um, it's It's been, like I said, my main focus now for going on three months. So um, if you don't like it, my feelings will be very hurt. It's going to be very sad. But, uh, so we also, to announce all this, we're doing a couple of giveaways. We're gonna, at the end of it, we're gonna be drawing a winner for an 11 pound stuffer. Then we're also giving some coupon codes away uh, for 10% off. For yeah, first off, everybody who watches, uh, we got a coupon code for $10 off a $50 order. 
Um, and then we've also got um, free hats. Anybody, while supplies last, um, add a hat to your shopping cart. They're all zero dollar value. You can get one of our hats. Um, orange is best. Don't 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 do the gray. Don't, that's ridiculous. Don't inflate There's no John's chance ego. That that's a better hat than this. No, you got to go for the orange. But uh, and for your hunters, we also have the camo. So might want to go with that. Yeah, we've only got a few of the camo. So if you want the camo, those are going to go fast. Um, but we probably have least of the gray because we've sold the most of them. Uh, no, we've got most no, of the gray I don't left. think that's right. But past the hats, then we've also, um, we've got a 10% off coupon. Um, the first 30 people to use it um, can get it. It's first come, first serve. And then we're also going to give away another 30 uh, 10% off coupons to just random people who enter on the, the widget. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you go to waltonsinc.com slash live. That's where the entry widget is. If you enter on that page, that is how you can enter to win the sausage stuffer. And then we'll also pick 30 names out of that for those extra 10% off coupons. So in total, we've got 30 10% uh, off coupons. Uh, we've got anybody who watches gets $10 off um, and a free hat while supplies last. All the coupons will be good after the live stream. Right. Um, so we can probably go ahead and give them the codes for a couple of them. Sure. Um, but you can't use them now. Once this is over with, about 5 o'clock or so is when we'll activate all the codes. So the $10 off one, real easy to remember. It's just live stream 10. Put that into your, into your shopping cart. Um, it's $10 off a $50 order. Really simple, really easy. Um, the 30, first 30 people to use live stream 30 will get 10% off of anything at waltonsinc.com. That's up to $100 value. So if you ordered $2,000 worth of stuff, it's going to cap out at $100. Right. Um, and the hats are just first come, first serve. There's about 100 of them that we've got out there. Um, so the first 100 people to order from now till Friday is about when we're expecting to turn that one off if we haven't run out by then, which I'm pretty sure we're going to run out Most in the likely. first day couple days here um, and hopefully everybody enjoys some coupons yeah no I mean who doesn't like coupons um, so to give you guys a quick basic rundown of how we've done this so the categories that we split all home processing into are seasoning and additives fresh sausage cured sausage jerky sausage casings deli meat smoked meats cured whole muscle meats which is like your bacons and hams uh, specialty sausage, and meat processing equipment. Now, a couple quick notes. Everything was totally filmed, totally ready to go, except for specialty sausage, where we haven't done anything in it yet. So those are going to be your Braunschweigers, uh, Lebanon bologna, things like that. We're going to get to those. It's just going to be a little bit further down the line. So we'll do blood sausage in there. Uh, and then as we go on in there, the 2Os and 3Os, those are going to be some pretty off-the-wall stuff. So if we're thinking blood sausage is a 1-0, I can't even imagine our 2-0s and 3-0s are going to be. Yeah, and, and that's all going to be super interesting. I'm more excited for specialty sausage than probably anything. <sighs> uh, we just figured that was going to take more time it's definitely than a lot of the other time, stuff. Yes. Um, but that, I, I think, is going to be a big hit with everybody, too. Yeah. I don't know. It, if you guys want to see us focus on something there first, um, leave a comment in the YouTube comments right here or go to meatjustics.com and uh, post something there. But yeah. Uh, we're going to try to make some crazy stuff there, I think. We are definitely going to go for some off-the-wall stuff. Uh, I know head cheese is definitely in one of the ones I want to do. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just that alone. Making sure we're making a product safe, telling you how to make it correctly, takes a lot of research. Uh, we want to have our processors, like our in-house food scientists, make sure everything we're telling you is correct. So it takes a while. So just be patient with us in that category. But... Uh, like the meat processing equipment, we broke that down into grinders, stuffers, mixers, and smokers. So, I mean, we've got fairly decent information on all those. After watching any of those videos, you should have a better understanding, if you don't already, about what that type of equipment does. Now, like I said, this is one O's. So we're assuming that you don't have much knowledge. So, so for some of our more experienced users, a lot of this information might not be as helpful as you know, we would hope it would be just because you already know this stuff. Another thing you're going to run into, uh, especially if you go to the Meatgistics site and then access the uh, Meatgistics University through that, there is a lot of duplication. Uh, we did that intentionally. Uh, so the cured sausage and the fresh sausage and the jerky, 
They also have their own equipment needed to make those types of sausage and jerkies uh, in that subcategory. So there's some duplication for sure from meat processing equipment to then being in there also. Uh, the reason that we kind of did that is if you want to make jerky and that's all you want to know how to make, you can just find everything in there. You don't have to look through everything. You can just go to one specific place and kind of find it all. So with that, it's, it's been a long time. We're, we're getting closer, but we still want to make sure that you know, we're going through everything, answering a couple of your questions and talking about some different stuff uh, just to, to make sure we give this the uh, send off it deserves. So I see one from uh, Glenn Thorman that says, it would be great if you showed how to assemble some of the equipment, especially the mixer and the sausage ingredient bags to be better labeled. Okay, the sausage ingredient bags, I mean, those, that's how it comes from Excalibur, so there wouldn't be much we could do there, but we could absolutely could do a video on how to assemble a meat mixer. I know, especially on the 44 pound mixer, that can be a bit of a struggle. It's not, once you've broken it down one time to clean it, it's not that obvious on how to put it back together. Uh, so yeah, that's definitely a good idea. We will get to that for sure. Mm. That's a nice one. To kind of jump back up on the top here towards comments and try to address some of the, the questions out there. Uh, we got one asking about, will these videos be on YouTube? Yes, they will be on YouTube. Um, the easiest way to see them in the organized class structure, to be able to follow along and say, hey, this topic 101, 102, follow, follow through, um, kind of the way we intended to, to watch them all to make the most logical sense, go to meatgistics.com or if you're on waltonsinc.com, at the top of every page there's a link that says Meatgistics Community and under there you'll see the Meatgistics University section. Um, then you can view them by topic and the class uh, title from there. Um, for other questions under additives, uh, will we cover nitrates? Um, uh -huh. Yes, I don't know that we have a lot about that out there right now. Nitrates are a little more complex than just your simple nitrites. Um, so that will probably be in one of our advanced classes yeah. that's, that's going to be coming out here soon. Um, but we do, I mean, we briefly touch on it uh, in our, our Sure Cure episode on that. Uh, just a real quick touch. Uh, but, I mean, we, we definitely know that that's one that a lot of people are, have questions about or somewhat concerned with. So we'll absolutely be addressing that in, in future episodes. But that is a, definitely a more advanced. We got one comment saying, will it barbecue is number one. So hopefully everybody else enjoys those as much as we do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we've got a, a couple interesting will it barbecues oh, pending out there. We do. Uh, uh, I think we, we're getting ready to upload them in the next day or two. I still need to do the post, but they were some out there ones for people who follow us on Instagram. They probably saw a pretty interesting picture of uh, me with something on my shoulder. So that one will be coming out probably in a week or so. That was definitely one of the more out, or out there ones we've done. That, that was further out there than snails. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was, was a wild one. Interesting. Um, got another question. Uh, wife only eats chicken or turkey. Will you Joe. do anything on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm in the same situation, actually. My wife was a vegetarian. I got her back to eating, ch well, she decided to eat chicken again. I didn't make her do anything. Um, so I do a lot of chicken sausage, uh, chicken thighs, chicken breast, grind it up. Um, still pushing her to eat those. She mostly just eats chicken breast. But yeah, we'll absolutely, we'll, we'll touch on both of those. Um, as far as a turkey, uh, I don't love turkey sausage. I just don't think it, it works really well. I mean, we could definitely do one on it where we try adding some either a, a fat replacement or maybe even just some straight pork fat, even though that kind of defeats the purpose. But yeah, we can definitely do things like that. Um. Another question here, what spices would you recommend for bone mat tacos? Is that, uh, I don't know. What are they going for there? I'm not sure what a bone mat taco is, but I, don't know. I can hear a. Uh, how do you enter the live contest? Um, make sure you go to waltonsinc.com slash live, and you can watch the live stream there. If you're watching on YouTube, it's still on our site embedded there, but that is where the giveaway widget is. Yeah, so it looks like uh, somewhat similar to lingua tacos. Uh, I'd imagine there is a we have a, a lingua um, recipe in the meatgistics section. I can't remember exactly where it is, but somebody has asked that question before, and we posted a full a full recipe in there. Let's see here. 
Yeah, so if you just go to uh, meetyoursix.com and in the upper right hand corner there's a, a search bar or you know, the magnifying glass, just click that and type in lingua. Uh, it'll bring you to an entire post that a little further down has a really good recipe that one of our guys here loves. Um, I don't know that he actually uses any type of prepackaged seasoning. I think he just makes his own, but he loves it. I mean, we both tried it. It was good. So. so on Canadian bacon, can you use dry bacon cure to make that? Do you remember which one you used in the Canadian bacon video you yeah, did? Yeah, I used... It, it was not a dry one because I'm 99% sure I injected it. Uh, so could you use a dry rub? Yes. You definitely could. What's your... Your difficulties there are going to be, it's a little bit thicker, well, depending on if you use a pork loin or a pork tenderloin. If you're going to use a dry rub, I'd go tenderloin. It's got a little bit less of a diameter, so it'd be easier for the cure to penetrate. Um, but yeah, there's no reason you wouldn't be able to do it. Just make sure you're holding it three to five days, depending on how thick it is. Um, so they could kind of follow the dry rub bacon, though, and follow that recipe. Yeah, yeah, I'd follow that. Not for smoking, though. Uh, when you get to the smoking section, I'd flip, flip back, back over to, bacon. to the Canadian bacon, the Canadian bacon yep, yeah. and, and follow that. Okay. Adding fresh fruit to sausage, like pineapple, and if the acid breaks down the meat casings, how long best to store it? Um, it's definitely gonna, pineapple for sure. Yeah, it's going to break things down. Pineapple, yeah. A lot of times you'll see like dehydrated fruits. Mm -hmm. um, instead of just like a fresh fruit or canned fruit put in there, something that's dehydrated put in, um, then when you, in the sausage, it's gonna rehydrate right. and reconstitute. Um, that might be the better way to go on stuff like that. Yeah, if you're looking specifically for an apple taste, uh, either an apple filling or apple sauce are great ones to use instead of the chunked apple. It just seems to work out a little bit better, especially in breakfast sausage for some reason. Um, but yeah, with pineapple, definitely be really careful with it because you can easily denature your proteins because it's got something in it that if you've ever eaten too much pineapple and your mouth hurts after, it's actually digesting you as you're digesting it. So just be careful with it. Oh, uh, so what type of high, or high temp cheese do I suggest? If you like heat, use the ghost pepper. That stuff is awesome. We just started carrying it probably three or four months ago. Something like that, maybe a little bit no, longer. No, it was longer. Was it longer? Yeah, no, that was well, like I last. just found out about it three or four months ago. Uh, it's got a great heat but also a really nice flavor, so it's a good balance of both. Um, if you don't like heat, then it depends on what you're making. If you're gonna make uh, something like a Philly brat, I love adding the Swiss to that. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really nice taste to it. Uh, if you're making apple bratwurst, that's probably the only one that I'd say my favorite cheese to add to that is the cheddar. Just something basic like that really works well with the apple. Hmm. So will there be, uh, any videos are on traditional fermented salami and sausage using a starter culture. Yeah, that'll be further in. We do have a dry curing cabinet here, and we did chorizo, wine, salami, and, or and salami, pepperoni. And pepperoni. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did dry cured those. So it's really, I, I mean, certainly from my aspect, that'd be my weak point. I don't have a ton of knowledge there. I mean, making it definitely helped, but I'm certain I wouldn't consider myself an expert on that. We'll. Uh We'll get Dylan in yeah. on that. Um, for those of you who watch the YouTube videos, uh, you probably don't recognize Dylan, but yeah. Dylan is our like our in-house um, meat scientist, basically. Yep. Um, that's what he went to school for was food and meat science. Um, he'll be helping us out a little bit on, on things uh, like that for sure. Those more advanced things. So if you ever ask us a question, we don't seem to get back to you right away. It's usually because we have to double check <laughs> with him to make sure we're not telling you something wrong that could be potentially harmful. So, so Dylan's a, a great asset for us to have. Uh, our commercial processors definitely use him as a resource and he's available to you guys too through us. So, uh, Linguisa Spice Pack. Uh, are we drinking I beer? I would love it if we were, but we are not. If someone wants to get us a beer and somehow get it to <laughs> us in the next 20, 30 minutes, we'd gladly drink a beer. And we certainly will be drinking one when this is over. Oh. All right, uh, I'm looking on Excalibur's bid site right now to see if they have a linguisa. West Coast thing, have you ever heard or tried Swiss sausage? It's from where I'm from, a lot of Swiss Italian farmers. Sure. Um, do you know more about that? I don't think I'd well, have we a great answer there. used to have, do we no longer carry a Swiss brat? We have a Swiss brat, mm. but is that what he's looking for? I believe so. 
Okay. Yeah. yeah, and then maybe that's the answer. We in our bratwurst seasoning section, there's one called Swiss style brat. Um, it it has a very traditional brat mm -hmm. flavor. Um, it's a little milder though. Depending um, on yeah. than our number one seller is Blue Ribbon. It's a very very deep, uh, strong flavor. The Swiss is a little more yeah. mellow. Definitely. Um, so yes, Excalibur does have a linguisa seasoning. Um, it would be we don't stock it though, so it'd be special order. Uh, you can call our customer service department. Uh, they can give you more information as far as pricing, things like that on it. One other thing to think about there too, as, as we start to come out with some of the meat logistics uh, university videos on a specialty sausage, we will start carrying more of those oddball Correct. flavors. Yep. We won't carry a lot, um, but if we show you guys how to make something, we will carry the seasoning to make um, some of those different type of things. Yeah. Um, so if that's something you guys want to see, make sure you leave us a comment, go to Meat Justics and, and put a post um, out there because we're going to kind of be following what you guys want us to make there. Anything that's in that specialty realm, um, if you want to see it, the more people you can get to chime in and say, hey, make this one, we'll stock the seasoning for it and we'll show you how to make it. That will definitely help out, yeah. Um, the question by Skylar Child, to get smoke adhesion to sausage, you use a water pan or not? So there are some differing opinions there. Uh, probably the best thing to do is to hold the water pan out for maybe the first 25 to 30 minutes. Run it with all your vents wide open or your dampers wide open. That'll just be your initial drying stage. Uh, it does help a little bit, but I wouldn't wait much longer than that because you're running into the possibility of getting case hardening. And once that happens, the outside of your sausage is going to cook and get dry, and it's just not going to pass heat efficiently into the center of the sausage. So that's a lot of times when you end up with something that's overcooked on the outside and still raw on the inside. That's what you have. It's called case hardening. So, so wet versus dry bacon curing. My first thought on that, dry, dry curing is kind of the old school method. Mm -hmm. um, wet curing is, is the newer version. You can either um, soak and marinate. Um, or you can inject. Um, if you're one of the bigger commercial guys out there, they're gonna they're gonna vacuum tumble. That's the easiest and best way. Um, but my preference would be to either marinate or inject. Yeah. Um, I would choose that over dry rub, but it really yeah. kind of depends on what you want to do. You want to make a more modern style bacon, or do you want to make the old school dry rub bacon? Now, if you want to make uh, or use modern techniques, but still get that old world taste, you can use bacon taste booster. Uh, you just add it in when you're marinating it, and especially if you're tumbling it. Uh, that will give you more of the old world classic flavor and just with all the modern conveniences. I mean, you can be done curing in 30 minutes versus, you know, five to seven days. Um, I saw a question there. I wanted to hop in on. There you go. Uh, Derek Miller is asking, after curing a sausage, is there an easy way to remove the casing to use for gumbos, etc.? The easiest way to do that would be cellulose casings. Yeah. So you cook it that once it's cooked, it won't feel like it's going to remove that easy. But once you put it in an ice bath, I mean, you literally just squeeze on one end of the casing and it pops right out and it gives you a beautiful skinless product. I'm liking cellulose casings more and more. The only problem with them is they are a little bit difficult. Once you twist them, you still pretty much have to tie in between unless you're excellent at twisting, which just not a lot of people are. Um, you have to twist it in a certain direction, uh, well, direction. Basically, you're making a, almost like a horseshoe out of it. A little difficult to explain. We'll get to that in later videos and sausage casings for sure. But yeah, cellulose casings is a great way to go for that. Um, best selling venison jerky seasoning. Um, our best selling seasoning is probably going to be the Colorado jerky. Um, it's a very traditional flavor. Mm -hmm. And I, I like to describe it as it enhances the flavor of the meat instead of kind of covering it up. Um, depends on what you're looking for though. Um, do you want a stronger flavor or do you want a stronger meat flavor? Um, Colorado jerky far outsells everything, everything. else. Yeah. Um, the other top ones are barbecue jerky, the Walton's Bold, um, Sweet Chipotle is growing a lot, um, and then a staple teriyaki. Uh, everybody likes teriyaki. Um, if you're looking at, if you go on the teriyaki route and you want that traditional style there, Look at our sweet teriyaki. Yeah. The sweet teriyaki is much more like what a store brand Traditional, version yeah. would be. Our normal teriyaki has a little bit of a heat no, and kick to it. it's more than a little bit, yeah. yeah. It's definitely got some heat to it. Uh, I, I would say the Walton's Bold for deer. Uh, I just love that seasoning. I've never made jerky of any kind with that and been anything less than thrilled, so that's a great one. 
Um, where's J muffins? Are those scaling things last long? Yeah, so those, uh, and we go over this in the Meatgistics video when we talk about casings, but uh, J Meslo uh, asks, do those cell or cellulose casings last long? Yeah, they last pretty much for forever. I mean, they're made out of a plant product. They have no expiration date. As long as you store them in a cool, dry place and leave them in their original packaging, they'll be good for years, so. Yeah. Yep, garlic pepper is another really good one that is delicious. And the dill pickle. For anyone who didn't watch the video we did on dill pickle, if you like dill flavored stuff, like dill pickles, it is awesome. I can't say enough good things about it. I loved it. It's got like a little bit of heat to it too. It's awesome. I see some people when smoking jerky put a sauce on it to finish. Do you have anything? I don't know why you would do that because that the whole point in jerky is to lower your water activity and yeah. how much water is in there. I, w I would not add a sauce to it. Mm -mm. Um, that would kind of defeat the purpose of jerky. The only thing I could think that they're going for there, like when we did our tender jerky, we added a ton of brown sugar. Now we did that first. We did that when we were marinating it. So it's not really the same thing, but what we're trying to do there uh, is keep the jerky nice and moist, but still have a really low water activity so it's shelf stable. Um, I don't know if that'd be the same, like if they're going for the same thing, like making it somewhat tender. I don't know. I don't know. Um, oh, there, at the end of smoking. Right. Um, so yeah, if he's, I mean, if they're adding it at that stage to try and make it tender yeah. again, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, but no, I, I, I wouldn't go that route. Um, Check out our how to make tender jerky video on meatgistics.com. See if that might be kind of what they're going for. Uh, so it was perfectly shelf stable. We could have left it out on a plate and nothing would have grown on it, but it was nice and flexible. I mean, it was great. And we use Walton's Bold for that too, so. Yeah. Uh, what's this? Should I store an unopened natural casing in the fridge? How long does it keep? Open versus unopened, still salted. So when you get it, you get, there's two ways to buy natural casings. You can either get them in home packs or you can get them in 100 yard hanks. Now the 100 yard hanks are gonna come uh, in a salt solution and the home packs are gonna come packed in just salt. Either way, you should get six to 12 months out of them as long as they're not open and stored in the fridge. So yes, fridge is definitely the way to go. Now, after you've taken them out, just make sure that you're leaving either the salt or the salt solution because anything that you don't use, you can actually put back in there, vacuum pack, put it back in the fridge and you should get the remainder of life out of those. Just remember that that is a natural product and if you haven't used hog casings in the past, what they are, or cleaned and processed hog intestines. So they definitely have a scent to them. Uh, don't worry about that. The difference between a spoiled hog or sheep casing and just their natural scent is, it's unmistakable. I mean, they smell beyond rancid when they've spoiled. So if it just has a little odor, it's a natural product. Yeah. So favorite seasoning for making pulled pork. Um, I'd say hands down, if you're gonna make a whole muscle pork product, something out of a pork butt, okay. start out with the butter flavored seasoning, <laughs> the injection. Uh, I mean, that's my go-to. It goes it good and you can put it in any type of meat that you're starting out as whole muscle. The outside, there's so many shakers that are good. Um, I like signature pork or sweet and sassy. Mm -hmm. Those are usually my two go-tos. Pork Rogers. chop and roast rub. Pork chop and roast yeah. rub. Mm -hmm. Dylan recently had me do that, but I'm, I disagree with what seasoning uses an injection. Um, Paws Black Bull, that's what I'd inject. Tastes awesome on pulled pork, and then I'd rub it outside. I mean, there's tons of, any of the uh, sweet and sassy, or the apple sweet and sassy, any of the rump rub line. Oh yeah, look for rump rubs on yeah. our website. All those are fantastic. Yep. So. Uh, freezing high temp cheese, that's definitely doable. Yep. Um, it, think of it like normal cheese. Um, you can throw normal cheese in your freezer and it'll last um, for months longer. Um, no issues there. The only thing you gotta look out for is freezer burn. Um, so make sure it's in a package that um, you're not gonna get freezer burn on and it'll right. last for for really for a really long, long time, time in the freezer. Long time. Um, Corey's asking what the Willies taste like. So Willies is one of our best selling, well it's actually our best selling snack stick seasoning and it's one of our best overall probably, right? Yeah. Uh, and we often overlook it because it's kind of, just so popular, it doesn't really need any promotion on its own, but it is excellent. It's mm -hmm. really good. It's tough to explain. Um, it's peppery, uh, very traditional, but don't let that turn you off it. I mean, it is excellent. I know that's not a great explanation, but that's about the best I can give is traditional and peppery. Um, but yeah, no, Willie's is awesome. Works great with wild game, works great with beef, works great with pork. It's 
really good seasoning. Um, L. So that's a tough one, Joe. Uh, Joe is asking for diabetics. Do you have a sugar-free or substitute spice mixes? Uh, yeah, also down below, low the salt content. The low salt content, content. Yeah, yeah. It's the, set, or the first one I saw, so I went back to look at that. Uh, so we do have some reduced salt content seasonings. Problem is that salt plays an incredibly important role in so many different things in meat snacks. Uh, snack sticks, bratwurst, everything. So it's tough to get a low salt seasoning that works really well. It's easier if you're making a fresh product, but when you're yeah. doing one of those cured products like snack sticks or summer sausage, that's where you run into some big issues. Absolutely. For things like protein extraction, it's really important. Um, but we will absolutely get to, I, I really like the, the question on the diabetic one because we have a diabetic guy here. Um, so we'll definitely get to that in future Mejistics University ones. That's a good question. Um, smallest batch you can make. Uh, we actually have something new there to add as well. Um, our seasoning packs only come in 25 pound units, um, usually at the smallest side. A lot of people ask us, well, I only want to make a pound at a time, so how can I do that? So John had the unfortunate job <laughs> of going through every seasoning that we have, every <laughs> cure. Um, I haven't done additives yet, but I'm getting yeah, to that. Yeah, we're getting to additives. Measuring out um, the weights, but not just the weights, but also the volumetric measures, and he's got both now. So if you want to make one pound of sausage at a time, you can either look and see, okay, it's this many tablespoons, this many teaspoons, or it's the, this many ounces, like 1.2 ounces. Yeah. He's got it all broken down by um, that exact seasoning. And one in five pounds. Mm -hmm. um, so Derek, I've not added fish sauce to a pork-based sausage, but one of my favorite dishes is Thai pork, and that uses uh, fish sauce in it. So it's definitely something I'm thinking about. Um, and even though uh, going forward, the majority of the stuff that we're gonna be doing for over the next, I'd say six to eight months is gonna be Meat Justics University. We're still gonna put out Willow Barbecues. We're still gonna do some recipe stuff and look for that Thai pork one because it's been something I've been itching to do for a while. I love that stuff. Hmm. So Eric says he's been struggling with the amount of pork fat to add to venison when making spicy Italian sausage. Generally, get it to the 20 to 30 percent range that's kind of the sweet spot if you go over it it's really not bad but you don't want to be too much under that yeah if you can add straight pork fat do that mm -hmm. um, and yeah like John said get to the 20 or 30 percent range if you can't have just straight pork fat a lot of times what I've done with some buddies of mine when we've made uh, deer sausages just take 50 percent pork butts 50 percent venison um, you end up adding a lot extra pork yeah. but that will help kind of um, even out the venison yep. and add enough fat to help it. Yeah, out of all the fats, pork fat by far is the best for making sausages, snack sticks, anything like that. If you just got a creaminess to it that really nothing else can duplicate. We've had a couple questions on uh, the coupon, so just to kind of go back over that again. Um, Livestream 10 is the $10 off a $50 order. Um, that is good for anybody who wants to use it. Um, that will be valid until November 30th. Um, we've also got free hats while supplies last. They're zero dollars if you just add them to your cart. Um, you can add it into any other order. Um, and then we've got 30 10% off coupons that we're going to give away through the widget, the same widget we're giving away the sausage stuffer here on. Um, that's at waltonsinc.com slash live. And then last, when we're done with the live stream, um, probably towards the end we'll, we'll announce it and give you guys an exact time when it's going to go live, but there's a 10% off coupon, first come, first serve, um, the first 30 people to use it. Um, that'll be live stream 30. So I've never actually used a plastic stuffing tube uh, when using natural casings. I have to imagine that it's more likely to have a burr on it than the metal would be, uh, just the nature of how that those are made. So I would think, yeah, you'd probably get a better finished product from a metal tube. Sorry, that was John Doe. So is pork shoulder good for making sausage? Can't seem to get pork butt in the stores around me. Uh, same thing. Yeah, uh, so you're, you're it, getting the same thing. If it's labeled as one, you can assume it's the other. It's just an interchanging of terms. Uh, Brian, that's a great question. Um, he's asking, when drying salami in a fibrous casing, do you need to use a protein line casing? 
what's the protein lining actually doing? That's definitely one I'm going to run by Dylan before. Yeah. I um, and I don't know enough there to give a complete answer. I would say at least a little bit, um, if you're actually drying it, um, you may want to look at using one of the collagen casings, um, but not like the sausage casings you would use for brats. Um, we've got a new section of non-edible collagen casings, um, brand new for us. We just started stocking that type of collagen this year. Um, those are typically what is used on a dried sausage. It's right. going to help shrink with the meat a little bit better than a fibrous would. Um, not to say you couldn't use fibrous, um, but you're probably going to use one of those non-edible collagens in that, in that aspect. Best way to process chicken so it's 100% chicken. We've, we've had a few attempts at that. Um, which way do you think was the best? Oh, it's, yeah, no, there's no question. Um, carrot fiber, cold phosphate. Uh, let me find exactly what the video was. Because there was one time I nailed it. It was perfect with just chicken breast. Now, if you don't care what type of chicken it is, you just use chicken thighs and then add carrot fiber and cold phosphate. That will turn out better than anything else. But... Where is it? Okay, so there's a, a meat just post and video called How to Make Juicier Chicken Brats. So if you follow that, you should be pretty good. Um, if you want to do chicken thighs, I also have one that calls, or that just says chicken thigh brats. And that was awesome. For the best temps to smoke snack sticks, um, if you go to meatjustics.com, Look under the Walton's Learning Center, how to make meat recipes. There is our full snack stick recipe there. Um, I would follow that guideline for thermal processing. Um, our, our schedule there is 125 degrees for an hour, 140 for one hour, 155 for two hours, and then finally uh, 175 until the internal meat temp on the snack sticks hits 160. Uh, so. Uh, Marissa is asking, what's our suggestion when adding extras to your sausage, such as cheese? I've heard some people who cube it up and then freeze it before putting it in. Uh, so I, I'm assuming you're talking about just regular cheese. The uh, problem with that is that it's going to lose its shape through the cooking process. So you're going to end up with some holes in your cheese, and the cheese is actually going to run out of the, the meat and maybe get trapped in between the casing and the meat, or maybe even down into your smoke pan. So if you can, uh, we sell high temp cheese that's it's still cheese. It's just designed, uh, you know, made in such a way that it holds its form through the smoking process or cooking process. That's the easiest way to do it. Uh, as far as freezing it versus letting it come up to room temperature, I can't see a huge difference other than if you put it in frozen, it might sweat a little bit more. So probably just let it come up to room temperature a little bit. Um, Andrew Schatz uh, put, I'm looking to get a vacuum sealer Weston Pro versus VacMaster, big price difference yet same size. Um, let us know exactly which ones you're looking at. Um, is it the VP215 compared to the Pro 2500 or is it, um, or is it the tabletop smaller units? Um, let us know which exact two models you're looking at. We can kind of run down the differences for you. For you. That's a good question from the grass-fed homestead. Um, might have to leave a little bit early. Um, no, you don't have to be present uh, to win the giveaway. Um, as long as you've entered, um, once it's over, um, the entries close at 5 o'clock. Um, at that point, we are going to draw um, the winners, and then we will notify everyone via email, um, and we'll send out all the information there. Right. So, yeah, he's asking the VP215 okay. versus the 2500. So the VP215 um, does require a little bit of maintenance. Um, it's got an oil pump, um, and then the Weston Pro 2500 is a dry pump, so it doesn't require any maintenance. Um, there's some pros and cons to going either way. Um, to be honest, the, they were basically the same price a couple months ago. Um, that's changing. Um, the Pro 2500 probably is going to go up here. Um, kind of outside of our control and even the manufacturer's control. Um, tariffs coming in from yep. China um, are bumping prices on some of that equipment by about 25% or more. Um, so that's why the VP15, VP215 is so much higher because yeah. that price increase has already it's taken effect. Jump. It has not taken effect on the Pro 2500. So if you want one right now, I would say go with the Pro 2500. 
um, from Weston, and that is kind of while supplies last, because yeah. um, the next time we reorder, um, they may be about 25% higher. Yeah, and I don't have any experience with the 2500. Uh, we haven't used it. I will say this, the VP215 is a workhorse. I mean, that's what we have in here. I use it constantly. And the thing, I mean, change the oil every, I think it's... Every thousand three, bags okay. or so? Yeah, initially I think it's a little bit longer than that, or maybe it's a thousand first and then two thousand after, yeah. but it'll be in the manual. The, uh, the thing just never quits. They're very similar though. Um, I wouldn't necessarily put either one that far ahead or behind no. the other. Um, very, very similar yeah. units. Weston makes great vacuum machines too, so. Huh. Any tricks to make sausage from domestic rabbit? I've never done that, but I'm absolutely going to try it. Uh, I would say you probably follow the same basic things as you would try for chicken. Uh, so you're going to have a lower fat content. So what you're looking for is something to help with the binding and water retention. Two best things, well, a couple of the best things for the, the binding is either carrot fiber, sure gel, or uh, soy protein blend. Use one of the three of those, don't use all of them. Um, and then add some cold phosphate. So what cold phosphate does is it changes the pH of your meat. And by doing that, it allows the water to bond more effectively and it keeps it in the meat during the cooking process. So it's gonna give you a juicier finished product. That's what I did with those chicken brats the one time that I nailed it. Uh, if you're making beer brats, how much beer do you add? How much beer do you drink? I mean, uh, I think you end up drinking more than you're adding. Uh, a bottle or so to a 20 pound, 25 pound batch. You don't wanna overdo it. I know it, it's tempting too, but you really just want that little bit of taste in there. You don't want it to just taste overly of beer. It also depends on what you use. If you're using a stout, which is what I've added in the past to good effect, just a bottle. If you're adding like a Miller Light, maybe a couple. Yeah. And if you haven't tried just our standard beer brought seasoning, yeah. um, I would definitely give that a shot because then you don't have to guess and mess with how much beer to add. The Beer Buds flavoring is our report or something different. Um, so here's an interesting one. Would you consider carrying cheese forms for use with a stuff or, or press? So we never tried that. We did try making applesauce with it once. <laughs> and it was, if we had had the camera rolling, oh, it was probably the funniest thing that's ever happened in I, here. I think there's still some stains in the room. There's definitely stains uh, on the ceiling, in the corner. I mean, it went everywhere. It was, yeah. and both Austin and I were basically on the ground laughing. It was. The stuffers aren't really made for that. And we, we tried to, we tried to do something they're not designed for really. Um, those presses are similar, but they're different enough. A lot of them don't have a gearbox here. It's a direct drive, mm. like what our small seven pound stuffer would be. Um, we actually should probably should try, that. try that with that yeah, one because that is very similar that. to what okay. those presses are like. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that That's one might work. a better idea. Okay. If we do that, we'll have to get it on camera and see if we make <laughs> as big of a mess as we did last time. Even if we do, it won't be as good as last time. Uh, so blood sausage, no, uh, never made it with this type of stuff, or actually never made it, uh, but we are going to get to it. It's going to be in one of the first few uh, specialty sausage ones we do. So we'll get there, and we will be using a stuffer just like this for that. Just use a filter bag with it. We tried stuffing cheesecloth down in the bottom of that and in the stuffing tube. That, I think, is part of what our problem was. It, I mean, the amount of pressure that built up was unbelievable. It shot at least 10, 15 feet, and it went all the way up to a 12-foot ceiling. So. so I tried pheasant sausage, and it was on the dry yeah. side. Even with pork added, next time I'll add some beef to it with pork. Instead of doing that, I would try to add more, more pork, pork fat. Yeah. Um, really, your key there is the fat portion of it. Beef or beef fat will work, but it's not as good as pork or pork fat. Yeah. Um, but really the key there is add more pork fat. If you can get straight pork fat, um, that's easiest. If you can't, you, like we were saying before, you can mix with butts. pork butts, yeah. um, but really just try to get straight pork fat. Yeah, that's another, that's a good point though. You should, we should also point out untrimmed pork butts. Uh, occasionally if you buy True. a butt at the store, it'll be trimmed to have the fat cap off and you're losing what you're really going for. So yeah, make sure it's an untrimmed butt. Chicken fat. I want to say you're probably going to want to take out chicken fat. It's, I mean. What are we making, Carla? Are we doing like a sausage product? Because my thought is if you're making a, a, 
on oh, a fat Oh. So it's not gonna have the same creaminess to it that a, a pork fat will have. Like I said before, pork fat's really unique in the amount of, uh, or in the creaminess it'll give you. It's better than beef, it's better than you know anything else. But if you wanna stay in the poultry, I would say, yeah. It'd be worth a shot. Yeah, absolutely. And if you are gonna do that, and if you don't wanna use just straight chicken fat, I try chicken thighs. And they have a good amount of fat to oh, them, yeah. and they're delicious. Yeah, when, we, when we've made like chicken sausage in the past, the thigh meat was a lot better. Um, than other just chicken meat. Duck fat's a good point too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if anyone sees us shivering up here, we turn the air down so cold. I'm I am freezing, freezing right <laughs> now. <laughs> like my fingers are dying. Uh, I'm literally shivering over here. Uh, so fresh or pickled jalapenos and summer sausage. Uh, you're gonna get two totally different results with those. Uh, personally, what I like is buying or just dehydrating them yourself, then rehydrating them, the seeds just before. Uh, I like the taste of the pickled jalapenos better than any other type of jalapeno, but I don't like what it does to the meat. I yeah. end up with some denaturization right around it. The easiest route I would take is we, we sell jalapeno flakes in the little shakers. It's like a one and a oh, half yeah, ounce. Oh, you don't have to get the five pound bag, um, that's right. Yeah, and that's, that's super simple. Um, it's dehydrated. Um, you're not gonna have to worry about denaturing anything. No. You just add water and it reconstitutes. Um, I think it's three parts water to one part flake. So if you have an ounce of the flakes, you add three ounces of water and it just rehydrates it. Yeah, that's the simplest way to do it in my, my opinion. Yep, adding chicken broth uh, to replace the water. If you wanna do that on chicken broth, that will, or a broth will absolutely work. Uh, any type of sausage. <laughs> AC on hell, I'm turning the heat on. It's gotten cold outside here. It is cold outside. We're in the middle of our building. So even in like the dead of winter, yeah. we don't turn the heat on. We leave the AC on because everyone else in their AC units all around um, heats right up the us. middle here. Um, we've got to run the AC year round here. But yeah, no, it's, it's uh, I went a little too far with it. Turn it down to 65 and it's probably about three degrees too cold. It's getting close to the rut, bundle up. Thinking of that, uh, going back to meat logistics, for all you guys that are deer hunting out there, one of the things I'd like to see if we can get more involvement yeah. on, on the meat logistics site, um, is inside our community section, um, we've got a hunting section that is a little neglected right now. <laughs> um, we were just talking about that today and what we can do to get more people to post, but if you go out hunting this year, uh, take a picture of your blind, take a picture of what your setup is, yeah. um, skinning see. the deer, um, your trophy buck, if it's a, a nice buck you want to post there, um, or just you got a fun story about what you've done for hunting this year. Go to meatjustics.com, look for the hunting section under, under the community, and tell us what you're doing. We'd like to see kind of what you guys are yeah. out there um, doing, what you're hunting. Uh, somebody gets like a big elk or moose or a bear, uh, something Especially crazy, yeah. uh, send us some good pictures there um, and you'll get a lot of feedback from the community as well. Um, hoping, yeah. to, hoping to see some more posts there. Yeah, we'd love that. Um, so the video on twisting brats, yeah, we do have that. It's up on either Meat Logistics if you go to our YouTube page. Uh, there's three different uh, ways of doing it that we covered. Uh, we'll be going over that more again in Meat Logistics U. Um, but we've got a, a very basic, uh, a slightly advanced, which is what I use most of the time. Then we actually had Dylan in here uh, doing a, a much more advanced way of doing it. I'm just my hands aren't dexterous enough to do it. So, or right, right now, I'll keep practicing at it. So do y'all know of a chart for using celery juice powder versus Instacure for cured sausage and snack sticks? That's probably deeper of a topic than we want to get into yeah. right now. Um, there's a lot of issues that are involved with using celery juice powder because it's kind of an unknown. Um, you don't know how much nitrites are truly gonna come out of it at times versus taking a package of Sure Cure, you know exactly how much nitrite is in there. Um, that is something we it's can a great question. We it's can a great get question. more nope. info, um, talk with Dylan on and see what we can come up with. Um, yeah, but I know there definitely are concerns about using celery juice powder for uh, smoked sausages, things mm -hmm. like that. So it's not really what it's designed for. Um, so that would definitely take a lot more research before we'd be willing to give any type of answer on it. Do you have a great way to make a spicy and dewy sausage? That makes me think of the, um, I forget what we titled the video. What's the hottest bratwurst? But the hottest bratwurst, <laughs> yeah, that was it. Um, we sell 
a uh, shaker seasoning called like extra hot red pepper. Great, yeah. Um, it is really, really, really Super good. Hot. Any seasoning that you want to make, but you want to spice it up, add a little bit of that into it. Do we have the? Keep looking. Or keep um, talking. I'm going to look to see if we have the usage uh, like recommendations on that. Yeah, we have some usage recommendations. I don't remember what it is. John's going to see if he can pull it up here, but um, it, it takes any non-spicy sausage and just adds a good solid heat yeah. to it. Um, it doesn't affect the rest of the flavor. So you can take something like a. Um, we did it with like our standard blue ribbon bratwurst, um, and we made that crazy spicy. Totally different than what it normally is. Yeah, so it's uh, three ounces per hundred pounds of meat. So the stuff is really, really potent. Uh, thoughts on citric acid in use? Uh, so anytime I'm making a snack stick or a summer sausage, it's not even a question I'm going to add citric acid. Uh, one, I really like the tang it gives you. And two means I can go right from stuffing right to the smokehouse. I don't have to hold it overnight because it also acts as a cure accelerator. So I'm a huge fan, of, uh, especially encapsulated citric acid. Uh, Brett Dennard, the actual name on that, the full name is Extra Hot Ground Red Pepper Blend yeah. um, or Extra Hot Ground Red Pepper Shaker. We sell it two varieties, one in a small little shaker, and then we also sell in a five pound bag unless you're going to make a thousand pounds of sausage, I would just get the small little shaker yeah, though. It, it lasts a long time. Uh, so we got someone asking, is Instacure the same as what they call prog powder or something like that? So yeah, uh, we also talk about that in uh, our Meatistics University, which will be going live here in just a couple of minutes. But yeah, prog powder, uh, cure number one, sure cure, pink cure, they're all the same thing. Uh, it's not until you get to the cure number two that you start talking about some different stuff. For snack sticks, is the carrot fiber better than sure gel binder? It depends on who you want to ask um, and what you're doing. It could be, could be better. Um, sure gel could be better. The benefit to using sure gel is that you're adding yeah. some extra protein to it as well. That's going to help with your protein extraction. Um, if you just want to increase the water holding capacity, um, carrot fiber is better. Carrot for that. fiber works well for that. It holds um, 26 times its weight in water, but. I mean, you can't deny that sure gel does make, make getting protein extraction a lot easier than carrot fiber does. It's another good one. <laughs> Have you guys made sausage with a cube foie gras? Uh, haven't. Definitely could be something we do in specialty sausage stuff. That's a good idea. Oh. oh, thoughts on citric acid use. Did we cover that? Mm -hmm. Okay, never mind. All right, I, I mean, I was talking about encapsulated citric acid there. If you were thinking about something else, let us know. Oh, wrapping meats in butcher paper, what's the freezer life? First off, don't wrap it in just butcher paper. If you're using butcher paper, wrap it in a plastic... Um, double I wrapping forget, film? Yeah, double wrapping film, that's what we call it, with butcher paper, or just skip that and use what we call freezer paper. It has the very lined on the paper. Shelf life on that, six to 12 months? Yeah, it depends on how well you wrap it, too. Um, I mean, you gotta get it a real tight seal. Uh, so if you're talking about freezer paper, six to 12 months, you're talking about just butcher paper, I think if you use a double wrapping film, you're still in the same ballpark, somewhere around there, but yeah, six to 12 months. <sighs> All right, so how many people do we have who have entered? Yeah, let's see how many total entries we have. That can't be right. Refresh the page. Yeah, 925 what? total entries so far. Okay. It's a lot. That does close out here in the next seven minutes. Our giveaway that will be over. Lot. Um, 925 entries. We do have 31 things um, to give away in there. 30 10% uh, off coupons and one of the sausage stuffers. So your odds are still pretty decent. Um, a whole lot better in our monthly giveaways. In our monthly giveaways, we have a lot of entries there. Um, and if you haven't entered this month, um, when we're done here, go to waltonsinc.com slash win yep. to enter our monthly giveaway. Um, I believe this month is the dehydrator. Yep. Yep, it's a Weston ADL Pro Series, which is awesome because it also gets above 160 degrees. So you can do your dehydrating and your cooking in the same steps. And we go over why that's necessary in the Meatistics University stuff. 
Radar, I've never heard of anyone wanting to use pink uh, butcher paper in the past. That may be a <laughs> regional thing to you, but Radar's a, a big uh, Meatgistics user, so thanks for joining us. Uh, my favorite general purpose seasoning is, well, actually, mm. it, it's too hard to, to, there's a couple. We might have a fight on camera here. There's a couple. So, um, Ultimate Steak and Roast Rub is the best thing to put on steaks. There's no question about that. It's also great in beef patties, so that, that's a really good seasoning. Now, if we're talking about anything non-meat related, the number one thing I'm always going to go to is cinnamon toast. It's amazing. Oh. It's never let us down on a fruit, on anything. It is great. It's amazing on popcorn. It's incredible in ice cream. I mean, it's that a phenomenal true. seasoning. And it's not just cinnamon and sugar. There's also some cocoa powder in there. I mean, there's some extra stuff. It is awesome. But overall, my favorite seasoning is still garlic romano. Good. I was hoping you were going to say it that. It's so good. It's garlic so romano is, is good on everything unless it's fruit. And that's why where I'd give you the win for cinnamon toast. Okay. Is because it's good on meat and fruit, ice cream. I mean, it's yeah. literally good on everything. Um, overall, I agree, best seasoning is probably Ultima Steak and Roast Rub right. because it's good on steak and it works well on everything else. Yeah. Um, but I use more garlic or mono than I use anything else by far. But I would say I also use Ultimate Steak and Roast more on veggies than I use anything else. Like if I'm making a, um, asparagus, it's oh, amazing yeah. on asparagus, it's good in salad. So yeah, Ultimate Steak and Roast Rub is great. Freezer paper versus vacuum bags. Um, Freezer paper is not going to win that fight. Um, vacuum, oh. vacuum pouches are going to win on your shelf life, um, hands down. If you can do vacuum pouches and you want uh, the longest shelf life, um, go with vacuum pouches. Uh, so Gregory's asking about dry cured sausage with the good mold versus the bad mold on the outside. How can you tell? There's a couple of different ways. Um, and again, this is really, uh, don't take what I'm about to say and go, process with this. We'll, we'll have videos on it later, but like I said earlier, dry curing is really, I would consider it my weak point. Um, but when you rub off the casing, if it started to, or we rub off the mold, if it started to eat into your casing, that's bad mold. You don't want that. Your best bet there is actually to buy a uh, Bactoferm sells like a, basically a mold, mold that you spray mold on 600. it. And it's good mold and it forms quicker than the bad mold can, so it actually just kills off the bad mold. That's the best way to know that you have the right stuff. Okay, here's more. I like, hey, guess I'm wrong on that pink and brown butcher paper. Matthew's saying the pink brown butcher paper is unlined paper that serious meat smokers use to wrap a brisket. Okay. I'll have to look at that and see if the butcher paper, I mean, the butcher paper we have that we label butcher paper is unlined. Right. So would it fit those same guidelines? I don't know. I would assume so. So, Matthew, they're wrapping this and then putting it in the smoker? Uh, so the difference between a tabletop and a, just a vacuum seal addressing is uh, a tabletop one is going to have a chamber where the entire bag goes inside of it, where just a regular vacuum sealer, just the opening is going to go into a, a tiny little chamber and it's going to suck the air up through it. They use different types of bags. So the major advantage of a large, well, one of the major advantages of a, a large tabletop model is that the bags are a lot cheaper because they don't have to have a texture to them. Uh, the initial investment in that type of vacuum sealer is going to be a lot higher, but if you vacuum pack a lot, you can make up that money re re fairly quickly in how much cheaper the bags are. Okay. Yeah. So we don't like wrapping stuff a lot. Um, I know there's going to be a couple of things we get into here that are going to have some pretty hot opinions on them. I think that's going to be one of them, wrapping for the stall and for keeping your meat moist. Another one's going to be types of wood to use. Uh, I mean, I'm prepared to see some arguments over that. Uh, just in general, I just don't always see a reason to wrap. I well, don't. We also much. don't do a ton of brisket. So we also like when we do, when we do do brisket though. We use we've got a huge smoker back in the test kitchen. It's a 500 pound oven um, from Pro Smoker, and that has like humidity controls. Um, it's got a microprocessor to control everything to it, and I think that helps with some of it. But I want to argue that we used the PK100 when we did our brisket last, didn't we? We did, yeah. But I think the, the big thing, at least for me, and I might be wrong, but in not wrapping is if you have the right 
environment. I don't yeah. think it needs it as much, but a lot of times when you cook them on a grill or smoker at home, you don't have the same controls sure. that you would sure. have on some of the other sure. smokers. Plus um, we inject, anytime we're doing a brisket or any whole muscle meat that we're gonna slow smoke, uh, we inject with something that has phosphates in it. So that just helps with moisture retention. So Andrew, best brisket rub. Um, I would actually argue and say don't use a rub. Um, that goes back to what John argued on uh, pork butts earlier is uh, Paul's Black Bull. I think that hands down on brisket is the best thing. It's an injection. Um, it's There's, an yeah, yeah. An injectable marinade, um, either or. It's got phosphates in it. It's going to help retain moisture, and it's got a lot of sugar. So when it um, when you inject or you marinate, a lot of that sugar is going to be left over on the outside and create a nice little caramelized exterior to it. Um, you can rub it with something else on top of that, um, but for me, I, I think the best way brisket is using our Paul's Black Bowl um, just as an injection and no, no outside rub. And our competition is over. There we go. Let's see if we get Let's a turtle. Let's some candle. winners. This has been a lot of fun for us. I don't know how it's been for everyone out there, but yeah, I've enjoyed this. Hopefully you guys it's are having nice fun. relaxed. Next time we won't turn the air down so much, so I yeah. won't be shivering quite as often. 991 total entries. Nice. Um, couldn't have nine more people who joined <laughs> us? Come on, guys. <laughs> next time that's the goal. It's um, too late now, though. And the question is, do we tell them when we're doing next time or do we wait? No, we might as well tell them. Might as well tell them? Next. Okay. On... Uh, uh, what we call Big Monday, everyone else in the world refers to as Cyber Monday. Um, that's just the biggest day of the year for us, so Monday after Thanksgiving. Um, what we're planning on doing is we're going to have a live stream for a better portion of the day. Um, yeah. How John and I are going to get through a live stream that long, I don't know. Um, but we're going to do um, another live stream on Cyber Monday. We're going to have a lot of giveaways, uh, a lot of huge sales, um, some items that are they'll be on sale for... 30 minutes only. Right. Um, just some sort of flash sale um, for people that are watching, paying attention. Um, so hopefully everybody comes back and joins us then. Yeah. And that, I mean, Big Monday is our biggest day of the year. So those sales, we should be putting out some fun stuff at that point. All right. You going to draw a winner? Yep. I am pulling it up. Live stream giveaway. And this is for. Are do we, we do we pull the stuffer first? first. I think do, we do the stuffer first. Do the stuffer first. So whoever we pull here. Okay, so we're gonna draw one winner. Um, just so everybody knows, we don't have any control over this. Uh, we use a third party software yep. um, for the giveaway widget. We go in and tell it to draw a winner and it, it uses um, something outside of our control to choose who wins. Um, And the winner is Austin Walton. <laughs> no, it's not. No. Okay, so our lucky winner is William Wood. William, if you are watching, uh, let us know in the comments. Give a big shout out. Yep. Um, we will be sending you an email to let you know how to get that stuffer. Um, and then for everyone else, uh, we still are going to do the drawing for the 30 people who are going to get that special 10% off coupon um, just look in your emails I think that's the easiest way to do it unless you want to sit here and read off all 30 names um, I'll go get in a blanket while you do that <laughs> warm back up I officially have them drawn so everybody is selected um, it would probably be easier yeah if we just send out emails yeah. we'll just um, send you all emails to let you know we will um, get all the Meatjustics University stuff flipped over live here in a few minutes. Um, so make sure after the live stream is over, you go to meatjustics.com and check out that Meatjustics University section. Yep. Um, and about, give us till about 5.30 and we will have um, the coupons live. So if you remember, live stream 10, that gets you $10 off any $50 order until November 30th. Um, free hats, that's actually, the hats are already live. Yep. If you place an order from now until Friday, add a hat to your cart while supplies last, um, it's free. Um, and then for the first 30 people that use it, live stream 30 is going to get you 10% off. So if you, you don't get an email from us with a separate unique coupon code for 10% off, um, the first 30 people to use live stream 30 are gonna get 10% off. We'll turn that live about 5.30 here. All right. All right, so I'm getting ready to just flip these all live. Yeah. All right, so everything should be live here in just a couple minutes, guys.
You're about to update 30 videos. You won't be able to form bulk actions. Oh, okay, so I have to. How long is that? I shouldn't take that long. So I can't do the other ones until this is done. Okay. But all right, I'm going to end the live stream. Okay. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, be looking for our next sales and giveaway video for November. Yep. And also come back on Cyber Monday for our huge Cyber Monday live stream as well. And if you guys like this, we're going to try to do some more of them. So sure. we'll see you around again. See you guys. I don't think that stopped it, though. Oh, that's how I have to do it. Do it up there.